go to the mountains. Well, getting ready to go to the Durban Canyon Retreat. Wanted to show you guys a few things to keep in mind or items that I bring and get prepared. So you can see it's been quite a while. The trailer's still full of leaves, but uh, got the snowmobile strapped in, getting my gear ready, and I'm gonna show you guys what I bring for just a overnight or weekend retreat up there when I'm going solo up to the cabin. Uh, one of the things that's kind of cool and fun, you know, this time of year, uh, it's the beginning of February, I can only get to the Derby Canyon cabin on snowmobile and really anywhere up there. It's probably two, three, four feet of snow right now. Uh, to bring my gear, obviously I can strap a little bit to the snow, to the sled itself, but I'm bringing, you know, water. Uh, I'll likely be harvesting firewood on the way up, especially if there's down trees across the road, which there were five last year when I got up there for the first time. I got myself not a skidoo sled, but an actual sled. So this is just a little utility sled. I don't know what the heck it's called, but you know, it's probably about four feet, three and a half feet long. I found this on Amazon. It's like a hitch setup where I'm just gonna be attaching this to the tail of the skidoo itself, putting things like my uh, chainsaw. Um, you know, I bring a come along and a strap just in case I ever tip the sled and need to get it right when I can't by myself. Uh, things like my water jug, uh, really heavy items that I don't want to necessarily weigh down the actual uh, back of the sled itself. I also have a box that I use that will strap right here and keep all of my main essentials. Items like my clothing bag, which has also other gear in it. Uh, items like the food for that trip. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, shovels, other things, but I'll show you guys that in a minute as well. But uh, yeah, this guy gets strapped into the trailer, gets uh, tied down so it's not going to go anywhere. And the rest will ride in the truck and the truck bed itself. And uh, I'll show you what else we bring so we can be prepared for a solo trip uh, where we access the cabin via snowmobile only. All right, I want to give you guys a little bit better of an idea of exactly what I do to prep the night before heading up to the Derby Canyon. You know, as a reminder, and as you saw, I can only get there by snowmobile. Uh, so let me go through some of the stuff that I bring and considerations and just being self-reliant prepared. First and foremost, since I love you guys so much, this is my YouTube recording kit. I've got everything from spare batteries, lights, uh, you know, um, tripods, all the gear that uh, I need to do videos and hopefully continue to make my videos higher quality and even better and better. So this is an atom, added item, a little extra weight, but hopefully it'll be worth it. Now, as far as the gear for the snowmobile, I have my helmet, which is super important. And someday I'll tell you guys a little bit about that <laughs> as far as my personal experience and all that. I have a collapsible shovel which is very, very helpful. This is something I'll strap on top to my other gear. It expands, it's aluminum, uh, very, very lightweight and very functional. I've got a come along, I've got straps, I've got extra uh, fuel, or not fuel, I've got extra oil for the snowmobile itself, bungee cords so that I can strap everything appropriately to the snowmobile, and ratchet straps and a few other things. So everything in this box I'll either be wearing or using to strap and tie things down to the snowmobile and be prepared that way. Always, always have snowshoes in an emergency if I can't use my snowmobile for whatever reason. This Derby Canyon Retreat this time of year probably has about three feet of snow. Uh, very powdery. I'll be the only human up there. And so if I have to pack out, I need to make sure I have a way to walk. And these are for that exact purpose. Now, this is the box that I strap to the snowmobile itself. So this will set on that back deck on the snowmobile up there right behind me. I really like the way that these clamp down. You're never going to lose that lid. Not that you would anyway, because it'll be tied down with uh, ratchet straps anyway. But here I have everything from... A handsaw, just in case there's little branches that are much easier that I don't need the chainsaw for. Uh, long battery life, high power adjustable uh, headlamp. Tie down cable for the actual uh, gear that I'll be strapping to the box. Some good quality, they're warm uh, gloves, but uh, you know I can still use the controls, not too thick like, like 
you know, uh, snowboard gloves or anything like that, but still very warm. My clothes, another item. So I have things like my charging cables, my clothes that are more than enough, spare pairs of everything in case I get wet more than once on the trip. Um, you know, some medicine and things like that in case of emergency, backup socks, like five pairs of socks, that kind of a thing. And then also, you know, these are usually just one night trips, maybe two night trips at the most when I'm going up there on the snowmobile. This is my cooler. It's not a super, you know, high quality, keep it cold forever. But for a one night trip, this is perfectly fine. I can fit all the food that I need to keep cool in here. And of course, it's branded with the best football team in the world. <clears throat> and then a few other little items like this is the two stroke fuel that I was talking about. I shouldn't need any more than that for a trip of this nature. Well, that was a little disappointing. That was my new drone, uh, and it lasted three and a half minutes before the battery died. I was really hoping it'd have a better battery life than that, so we're just going to go with the standard tripod. All right, so I hope uh, you guys heard to this point, but uh, the other things or remaining things in here is my two-stroke fuel. You saw before I mixed it up in the one gallon. I also am keeping the two gallon in the truck bed just to have backup with me, because why not in the truck? Uh, but this is the only thing that'll go up the mountain with me. We have a full tank in the chainsaw itself in this for backup. Uh, you know, usually the tank in the chainsaw is enough, but you know, if I have five trees, that, uh, that'll come in really handy and will be a necessity. So this is the thing that I'm gonna be in strapping to the snowmobile right behind me. These are kind of my most essential items, food, clothes, etc., etc., And gloves, straps, etc. So the other items that will be going along with me, so this is the water that I'll be bringing with me. This is a five gallon jug. Five gallons is excessive, at least for the trip up there. So I fill this to about two. You know, the thing that's super cool about this is not only is it pressurized, it's got a hand pump so that when you turn this, you know, the water comes out with pressure. It also has an inline filter. In theory, you can put any water in this and make it safe drinking water. So I can put, I can melt snow up there, you know, which is really easy to boil since you're already melting it on the wood stove. But if I had a stream I came across, if I'm using my well, which is the first year I have the well. So now basically I'm planning to top this off on my way up. Uh, the well's on my lower lot. The lower lot's only about half a mile from the cabin, whereas the entire snowmobile ride is closer to five miles. So I'd rather not carry 40 gallons, give or take, of water if this was full. Uh, I'm just keeping this at about two gallons just so I have water for emergency situations before I get there. And this will go in the sled that I pull behind the snowmobile. So we've also got a five gallon tank of fuel. I always keep extra fuel um, on the way out. I always fill my truck up so I have close to a full tank by the time I get there. Having backup fuel is just uh, an extra you know, precaution. If you ever get stranded, if you're maybe relying on the engine for heat at night, um, just not a bad idea to have an extra five gallons with you. Obviously we've got the chainsaw, so that also will go with me on the snowmobile. That's probably something I'll put in the sled that I pull behind. As I've mentioned several times, uh, the one year that I got, or last year, when I finally got up there and got to the cabin, I had to cut my way through five trees that were down across the road. That's the other way I know for sure I'm the only human that goes up there, at least as far, well really, that goes up there at all because it was pretty early in the forest access road that that first tree was down. And the very first time I went up there and didn't realize I would need a chainsaw, I had to turn around that night and end up staying in a motel. So sad, sad day. <laughs> so the other items, and by the way, I always keep this truck stocked with emergency type things. I'm always prepared in case I got you know, stranded or obviously have to rely on myself. If you guys want to know about all the things I carry, go find my Mountain Essentials video. That'll be in the, uh, oh God, can't remember which playlist it's in. I think that's probably in the how-tos and uh, in the off-roading playlist as well. If I remember, I'll also tag it in this video. But essentially, all this gear that you just went through will go with me on the snowmobile up to the cabin. I also have my tire chains. I keep four sets of chains because the lower uh, portion of getting up there is 
at a low a low enough altitude that gets warm enough to melt and refreeze. So you have the bad condition of being somewhat icy, having not a ton of like fluffy snow. And so I prefer four chains over airing down, although I haven't done a lot of airing down and I might try that a little bit more this season. The other thing, by law, we have to carry chains this time of year when we go over the mountain passes that I take to get there. So it's good to have. And, you know, having four chains, I can have a lot of function. I have good steering um, and they're not terribly expensive. That set, I'll probably show you if I put them on, they're easy to install. They kind of self-tighten with a little rubber strap that is the last connection. And they have a diamond pattern, which I like because I think it gives me better steering traction versus just straight across because you always have points of contact and I just think they're a good set. And these are 35 inch tires. I think those chains were like 100, 120 for two, which as far as big tire chains go, it's not that bad. This will be the second season with them. We'll see how many seasons I get out of them. A few other quick things. We've got our winch right here. Now, maybe one day I'll upgrade and have a fixed winch, but the thing that's really nice about my setup is I have a receiver on the back of the truck and a receiver on the front of the truck. I have used both depending on my situation, depending on how I'm stuck, depending on what trees are around me. So that's definitely really nice. And again, uh, some of the other gear in here, watch that mountain essentials video because i'll go through the entire thing but uh, the only other things i like to carry are snow shovels you know sometimes digging yourself out is quicker and easier than setting up the winch or going to other extremes that way and at this point we're gonna just uh, get everything in the truck that needs to go in the truck be completely ready to go first thing in the morning and i will see you guys out in the derby canyon <laughs> So I've been overthinking this. I'm still trying to figure out some of the best like systems and routines and everything. And obviously I got to take a, a chainsaw up to the mountain. You know, the first time I went up to Derby Canyon last year, when I got the snowmobile, I got turned away because there's down tree and I'm talking about, you know, a very significant tree. Uh, and I could not get past it because it was across the entire road. Uh, when I finally got, you know, I brought my chainsaw the next time there was five trees down because no one, as literally besides me goes up there in the winter time. So right now I'm getting prepped with fuel. I've been overthinking this whole thing uh, because this little container is meant for two stroke, but I, I don't know. It would make sense to me. It should have a line of where the oil should be because it's got the 20 to one ratio, 40 to one and so forth. But the 40 to one, there's a line here. There's no way that's right. Cause this little guy is meant to be one gallon of fuel with this entire container. This is the bigger container I like to use for my two stroke. Uh, but it's two gallons and I've got this, which I don't use because it doesn't have a cap and I don't want to let fuel just evaporate all day and lose it. And I've been trying to figure out, well, how do I mix it? How do I make sure it's right? Well, duh, I'm just going to use this as my mixing can, put a gallon of fuel in there, put the entire thing of the oil and that way we'll have one gallon to that container and should be good to go there. And then the other thing last year, you know, I have a sled. I have myself. I'm 200 pounds. I have a box that's on the sled. And when I say a sled, you guys saw that little black one that I'm pulling behind me. So it'll be attached to the back of my snowmobile. The snowmobile will also have a box on it. Plus me. It gave me overheating warnings a couple times last year. So I'm trying to be a little bit more conscious with weight. Uh, obviously, I'll be bringing water and all that, um, which is what this guy is for. Uh, but instead of bringing five full gallons, because, you know, water is eight pounds a gallon. So five, that's pretty significant. And I don't need five gallons from the start. I basically just filled this to about two gallons. This is my emergency water. So if I were to get stranded, I'd have two gallons of water. Once I'm at the cabin, I can harvest snow. Also now we have the well, which I didn't have before. So my plan is to fill this with well water. So instead of going five miles on the snowmobile with eight, with five gallons, I can just go the last half mile from the lower lot up to the cabin. So uh, yeah, getting ready, getting uh, the truck all packed and ready to go. And I'll just take you guys through the full gear, but I'm <laughs> sitting here trying to figure out how am I going to make sure the ratio is right and two gallon and this stupid thing, but fill this with a gallon, put the two, uh, put the entire container in there. So we know that our ratio is correct for 40 to one. And then I'm just going to fill this with the actual, uh, fuel just for the trip, because I am not going to need a full gallon or two gallons just for my chainsaw. This is more than enough for a single trip up there, not to mention the fuel that's already in it. So Last year I had two gallons of fuel. I had full water. 
other things that were probably unnecessary and now getting a little more conscience with uh, weight. We're paring it down and getting better systems. And now, again, this is the first time I'm going up there this year. I should have been up there a few times before, but getting stuff dialed in and you guys can learn from me along the way. And so you don't have to make the same mistakes I've been making. My mission is self-reliance through sustainable living, and we're here to build a community. Click here to subscribe to be sure to get more awesome content for living off the land. And be sure to go in to enter for notifications. Click that bell, get notifications, and stay in tune. Subscribe, watch, and comment. Let's build a community. See you soon.